The beginnings of Cretan history are locked in the darkness of the Neolithic period, which ended around 2600 BC. About this time, during the Aegean Bronze Age, there emerged on Crete a civilization that became known as the Minoan Civilization. Here in this video, we'll discuss the most advanced civilization in Europe, the Minoan Civilization and mystery of ancient Crete, so stay tuned till the end so you never miss a single part. Let's flash back in 2600 BC to know where Crete is located and how this civilization was discovered. And we'll enlighten the history of Minos with its advanced lifestyles. Crete is the largest and most populous of the Greek islands. Crete rests about 160 kilometers south of the Greek mainland and about 100 kilometers southwest of Anatolia. Crete was the center of Europe's first advanced civilization, the Minoans, from 2700 to 1420 BC. Minoan civilization has been described as the earliest of its kind in Europe, a so-called the first link in the European chain. The Minoan civilization was centered on the island of Crete, with additional settlements around the Aegean Sea. Crete is located in the south of the Aegean, situated along maritime trade routes that connect Europe, Africa and the Middle East. Because it straddles the Mediterranean and African climate zones with land at a variety of elevations, it provides a diverse array of natural resources. However, it is notably poor in metals, a fact believed to have spurred the Minoans' interest in international trade. The island is seismically active, with signs of earthquake damage at many Minoan sites. The majority of Minoan sites are found in central and eastern Crete, with few in the western part of the island, especially to the south. The civilization was rediscovered at the beginning of the 20th century through the work of British archaeologist Sir Arthur Evans. The name Minoan derives from the mythical King Minos and was coined by Evans, who identified the site ruins at Knossos, a Bronze Age archaeological site in Crete, with the legend of the labyrinth and the Minotaur. With Sir Arthur Evans's arrival in the 1890s and the start of his excavations and eventual reconstruction of the Knossos site in 1900, Minoan archaeology was born. Over the next three decades, Evans unveiled what was probably indeed the famous labyrinth, the palace itself, and a stunning succession of impressive artifacts. He also encouraged others to investigate ancient Crete, including the intrepid Harriet Boyd Hawes, now recognized as a great female pioneer of Greek archaeology, who discovered and excavated Gurnia in 1901-4. In Greek mythology, Minos was a king of Crete, son of Zeus and Europa. Every seven years, he made King Aegeus pick seven young boys and seven young girls to be sent to the labyrinth to be eaten by the Minotaur. After his death, Minos became a judge of the dead in the underworld. The many rooms of the palace at Knossos were so oddly shaped and disordered to Evans that they reminded him of the labyrinth of the Minotaur. According to myth, Minos' wife had an illicit union with a white bull, which led to the birth of a half-bull and half-man known as the Minotaur. King Minos had his court artist and inventor Daedalus build an inescapable labyrinth for the Minotaur to live in. I know the questions arise in your mind, what's the actual meaning of labyrinth and what its origin? And why was the Minotaur put in the labyrinth? Throughout the excavations of the palace of Knossos were found images of the double-headed axe, the labrais. The word labrais is inscribed in linear B on tablets. Under this interpretation, forwarded by Sir Arthur Evans, the archaeologist who excavated Knossos among others, the word labyrinth would indicate the palace of the double-headed axe. As we discussed before, the Minotaur was a fearsome beast. Half man and half bull, he was soon not fit for human company. So the Minos was hidden deep within his maze, he was not a danger to the other inhabitants of the palace. Let's have a deep look into what archaeologists discovered from Minoans. Minoan palaces were divided into numerous zones for civic, storage and production purposes. They also had a central ceremonial courtyard. The most well-known and excavated architectural buildings of the Minoans were these palaces that acted as administrative centers. When Sir Arthur Evans first excavated at Knossos, not only did he mistakenly believe he was looking at the legendary labyrinth of King Minos, but he also thought he was excavating a palace. However, the small rooms, large storage vessels and archives led researchers to believe that these palaces were administrative centers. Even so, the name became ingrained and these large communal buildings across Crete are known as palaces. Although each one is unique, they share similar features and functions. 
the largest and oldest palace centers are at Knossos, Malia, Faistos, and Kartozakro. These large and elaborate palaces were up to four stories high, featuring elaborate plumbing systems and decorated with frescoes, a visual art. The most notable Minoan palace is that at Knossos, followed by that at Faistos pictorial script. The complex at Knossos provides an example of the monumental architecture built by the Minoans. The most prominent feature on the plan is the palace's large central courtyard. This courtyard may have been the location of large ritual events, including bull leaping, and a similar courtyard is found in every Minoan palace center. Because the Minoan alphabet, known as Linear A, has yet to be deciphered, scholars must rely on the culture's visual art to provide insights into Minoan life. The visual art, known as frescoes, discovered in locations such as Knossos and Akrotiri on the island of Santorini, inform us of the plant and animal life of the islands of Crete and Thera, Santorini, the common styles of clothing, and the activities the people practiced. For example, men wore kilts and loincloths. Women wore short-sleeved dresses with stirred skirts, whose bodices were open to the navel, allowing their breasts to be exposed. Minoan ceramics and vase paintings are uniquely stylized and are similar in artistic style to Minoan wall painting. As with Minoan frescoes, themes from nature and marine life are often depicted on their pottery. Similar earth tone colors are used including black, white, brown, red and blue. The Minoans were primarily mercantile people who engaged in overseas trade. After 1700 BC, their culture indicates a high degree of organization. Minoan manufactured goods. The Minoan period saw extensive trade between Crete, Aegean, and Mediterranean settlements, particularly the Near East. Through their traders and their artists, the Minoans' cultural influence reached beyond Crete to the nearby Cyclades group of Greek islands and to Egypt, Cyprus, and the coasts of Turkey, Lebanon, and Israel. The Minoans traded in saffron, which originated in the Aegean basin. According to Evans, saffron was a substantial Minoan industry and was used for dye. Other archaeologists emphasize durable trade items, ceramics, copper, tin, gold, and silver. Minions used double axe symbols. Whilst the double axe continued to retain its practical use as a forestry and hewing tool in Minoan culture, it became imbued with a special religious significance from an early stage, which can also be seen in Thracian and mainland Greek art. For the Minoans on Crete, the symbol was especially associated with female divinities and priestesses and thus became a synonym for matriarchy. To find such an axe in the hands of a Minoan woman would therefore indicate that she held a powerful position within Minoan society. In Minoans, bull leaping is commonly interpreted as a ritualistic activity performed in connection with bull worship. In most cases, the leaper would literally grab a bull by his horns, which caused the bull to jerk his neck upwardly. This jerking motion gave the leaper the momentum necessary to perform somersaults and other acrobatic tricks or stunts. The Minoans were primarily a mercantile people who engaged in overseas trade. After 1700 BC, their culture indicates a high degree of organization. Minoan manufactured goods. The Minoan period saw extensive trade between Crete, Aegean, and Mediterranean settlements, particularly the Near East. The Minoans settled on other islands besides Crete, including the volcanic Cycladic island of Thera, present-day Santorini. The volcano on Thera erupted in mid-2nd millennium BCE and destroyed the Minoan city of Akrotiri. Minoan religion apparently focused on female deities with women officiants. While historians and archaeologists are unsure of an outright matriarchy, the predominance of female figures in authoritative roles over male ones seems to indicate that Minoan society was matriarchal. After years, the rule of Minoans declined when Minoan palace sites were occupied by the Mycenaeans around 1420 to 1375 BC. Mycenaean Greek was written in Linear B, so we know more about the Mycenaeans who tended to adapt rather than supplant Minoan culture, religion, and art, continuing the Minoan economic system and bureaucracy. Which things that you inspire the most in Minoan civilization? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and subscribe our channel to know about world mysteries.